Alive and Well STL is a presentation of the St. Louis Regional Health Commission with the first decade review of health status report to build a healthier St. Louis and Rare Gem Productions. Power up with the positive. Learn more at onerarejem.com. That's O-N-E-R-A-R-E-G-E-M.com. Support for Alive and Well STL comes from Beyond Housing. Helps entire communities become better places to live. Learn more at beyondhousing.org. The Regional Health Commission works in partnership with regional health sector advocates and stakeholders to improve health care access, reduce health disparities, and improve health outcomes for the uninsured and the underinsured in St. Louis City and County. Alive and Well STL with Bethany Johnson Javois, CEO of the St. Louis Integrated Health Network. My vision obviously would be that we find a way to make medical services affordable, convenient, and encourage or empower people to take charge of their lives as it relates to their health. We have the Internet. We have resources that were not available to us just 10 years ago. If they're going to text and they're going to be on Facebook and they're going to be on this and they're going to get on the health, okay? Get on the health site. We'll be right back. Rare Gym Productions, proudly presenting, promoting, and producing positive programs. Hi, this is Jade Harrell. You remember what it was like to dream? Yeah, what really compelled your heart. Imagine if you knew early on that it was possible for you to live your dream. Kwame Foundation presents the Live Your Dream Concert. Introducing performances by Brianna Elise and Trio. Thursday, March 20th from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. at the lovely Sheldon Concert Hall, 3648 Washington Boulevard. Sponsored by Worldwide Technologies, the St. Louis American, and Renaissance Financial. I am excited to host and be a part of this very special event. Get your Tickets at eventbrite.com. Rare Gym Productions proudly presenting the positive. What does it mean to you to be alive and well in STL? I guess to me it means to be in a state of health where I can enjoy everything that St. Louis has to offer, which basically means taking care of myself. And I think for the listeners, the question is, what do I need to do to take care of myself in general? But more specifically related to our conversation, what do I need to take care of my heart? so that I can be active, so that I can basically do what I want to do and live a long, healthy life in St. Louis. Outstanding. Alive and well, STL. Good morning, St. Louis. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Bethany Johnson Javois, CEO of the St. Louis Integrated Health Network and host of Alive and Well STL, sponsored by the St. Louis Regional Health Commission. Today in the studio, I'm excited to be speaking with Dr. Angela Brown, hypertension specialist at Washington University, and Brenda Marr, executive director of Employment Connections. Thank you both for joining me. There's a recent report released by the St. Louis Regional Health Commission that is a 10-year look back at the changes in our community's health. And one of the topics is focused on heart disease and heart conditions, which is what we'll be focusing on this morning. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm really happy to be here to talk about some of the things that affect people, particularly in my family. We often talk about how we look alike or that child looks just like his daddy, and we forget that the genetics are more than just looks. They're also behavioral and they're also medical. And some of the things that have impacted our life in a very profound way is the genetic medical conditions that have plagued my son's family on his father's side. Can you give us an example of what that looked like in your family? Yeah. My son's father passed from a sudden heart attack at 43 years old. He was sitting on the couch watching TV. His second son, this past October, passed at 43 years old. He was sitting on the couch watching TV. The day before, he had cut his grandmother's grass. The day of his death, He was a contractor, and he had worked that day with no seemingly problems, did not show any symptoms of being overly tired or stressed, nor did his father. So there's something going on in this family that's impacting the men. My son, this was his half-brother, my son is 34 years old. So the impact for me as a mother is nine more years from now, God willing that I'm still here, I'm going to have the worst year in my life. I just know that as hard as I try, I'm going to be worried about that. So what do I do? 
I start talking to people, and so often people don't talk about health issues like they should, just in general. And I uh, had a lunch with a young lady who told me, oh, that runs in our family, sudden death syndrome, you know, with no apparent signs. And my mother found this really great doctor and has been tested for Brigada syndrome. And, of course, I looked it up. You know, mm-hmm. it, what it means is yeah. you die suddenly from cardiac arrest with no apparently previous signs or symptoms. So I go to my son, 34-year-old male, mm-hmm. African-American, and say, hey, I have this great doctor. I went to, I'm not going to blah, blah, body, daddy, daddy. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> all the excuses that men give for not going to take care of their health. Or to even check it out. Even when they're knowledgeable, there is, is an educated man. He has three children. He has all the reason in the world. And if you have time for everything else, why would you not take the time? He doesn't have the time. I get an annual physical, but you need to see a cardiologist. Your physician is not going to figure this out necessarily. That's what I, the research tells me. So there's a test you can take. I, and, you know, of course, I bring up his brother mm-hmm. and his father, and I don't live the same kind of lifestyle they lived. Any mm-hmm. excuse? So what it looks like for me is, you know, danger around the mm-hmm. corner, and I'm going to continue to harass him <laughs> until he goes and sees this doctor or some other doctor that can provide me and him with answers that we need. Okay, so the Regional Health Commission's 10-year look back shows that between 2000 and 2010, mortality rates for heart disease fell 29% in the region, which is an incredible statistic. Dr. Brown, what changes in health care and lifestyle do you think may have contributed to that 29% drop in the region? So I think there are a lot of things that may have contributed, and you know I don't know all of the specifics, but I think in that 10-year period, we probably saw a significant increase in raising awareness in the community, trying to make sure that patients knew things like their numbers, being aware of high blood pressure. And if you have high blood pressure, what numbers do you need to know about? I think there was more education around cholesterol awareness. Definitely an increase in awareness around obesity. In the mid-2000s, there was a big report that America was becoming more and more obese and that that was the new epidemic. And with the increase in obesity, we definitely saw increases in hypertension and diabetes, increases in cholesterol, and all of those things are risk factors for heart disease. So I think as the awareness level started to rise, people actually started to pay a little bit more attention to those things. Likewise, I think you had programs within the city. I remember the city of St. Louis had a big program called Healthy Heart, where they were actually going out into the community. They had identified some of the high-risk zip codes, particularly in the city, that they were targeting to make sure that people were aware of those heart disease risk factors and trying to provide them with resources to help them address it. You know, more awareness about healthy eating and going to Soulard to get more fresh fruits and vegetables, trying to take advantage of neighborhoods when it came to exercise. You don't have to have a gym membership. You can use your own neighborhood and walk and do those kinds of things. So I think there was a concerted effort to bring awareness and then within the city, different groups really try to get that word out to get people more engaged and thinking about their own health and being aware. The other side of that is If people are more aware when they go to the doctor and go for a visit, then they know what questions to ask as well. Another thing that occurred, I think, along those lines in particular, is that there was a greater awareness among physicians about the health disparities that occurred. Because you mentioned that the report showed a 29% decrease in the St. Louis area. But when you still look at the numbers, African Americans still have higher rates of heart disease, higher rates of death, higher rates of stroke, higher rates of complications related to diabetes. So if you're going to a physician, no matter who that physician is, whether it's a private physician in a clinic or whatever, that person needs to be aware of the risk factors that may be more important or more relevant to you simply because of your African-American ethnicity. Are there some simple steps that you find being a physician that people can do and it makes a great amount of difference in their life? 
Two of the most important things, one is relatively easy and, and the other is a little more challenging. But from the standpoint of hypertension, really watching sodium intake, watching the amount of salt in the diet. And a lot of people say, oh, I can't give up salt. I have to have salt in, in my food. But what I tell them is that if they can actually cut back on that salt for 21 days, that's really about all it takes for your taste buds to adjust. After that time, if you eat a salty meal, you almost can't stand it because your taste buds have adjusted. But I do see, particularly as people get older, they are more sensitive to sodium intake, and that can definitely affect the blood pressure. The other thing, and this is where we really see the biggest bang for the buck, for lack of a better term, is weight loss. You know, you don't have to get down to your high school, you know, skinny weight. But if you can lose about 20 pounds, we can sometimes actually see about a 5 to as much as 20 millimeter reduction, but about probably about a 5 to 10 millimeter reduction in the systolic blood pressure, which is the top number. So 20 pounds, you know, for a lot of people, that's not a lot of weight to lose. And when you think about it, you know, that's taking someone from 200 just down to 180. So it's often just making baby steps. People think that if I weigh 200 pounds, I need to get down to 150 or I need to get down to 140. But just that 20 pounds of weight will have a significant improvement in their blood pressure. And even more so, the studies have actually shown that only a 7% reduction in weight can have a significant reduction from the standpoint of diabetes. So if you weigh 200 pounds, 7% of that is 14. But just a 14-pound weight loss makes a difference. So just you know, knowing where you are, picking a goal, even a small goal or a short-term goal, and really working towards that. But I think really trying to watch the diet, the sodium intake, and working on the weight loss are two of the most important things. And I guess actually a third thing, and probably the easiest thing of all, is to start exercising. And as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to have a gym membership because a lot of the patients that I see, a lot of patients, you know, can't afford a gym membership. But if you can just start walking, walking is key. Now, the kicker to that is you actually have to walk at a pace where you actually feel like you're walking and you're getting some benefit. So I have patients come in and they tell me, oh, I walk, I walk all the time. And they take advantage of Forest Park and they walk. And sometimes I see them and they're just kind of loafing along and leisurely. they're talking a mm -hmm. leisurely walk. Exactly. They're out for a leisurely walk. Well, it's great to go for that leisurely walk, but you need to walk at a pace that at the end of it, you actually feel like you've gotten your heart rate up. And what I tell people is that everyone has a cell phone. You need to walk at a pace where you cannot walk and talk on your cell phone at the same time. If you can walk and talk on your cell phone or walk and talk with the person that you're walking with, you're not walking fast enough. And for somebody who really hasn't exercised in a while, that's really not going to be that fast. But that amount of exercise, just getting started with that, really can have a positive benefit for their overall heart health. So I think the more people are getting engaged, the more we talk about this, the more we talk to our friends, we tell our family members to know their numbers, let's exercise, let's walk, let's start eating healthier, then I think we'll definitely continue to see those numbers go down. As a community, as a whole, we all need to be more engaged in making sure that our communities are safe. Because I talk about walking, but one thing people say is, well, I can't really walk in my neighborhood because it's not safe or, you know, because of crime or because of dogs that are in the a neighborhood. And that's something we can all, you know, use as an actionable item to, you know, talk to our older people and, you know, whoever we need to talk to in the city to make sure that we do have safe neighborhoods, safe places to walk, safe, you know, community centers. So just really trying to become a healthier community, designated areas that people know. I can go here at you know, certain amount of time at a certain time period. And this is a place where I can take advantage of that. The other thing that's actionable is trying to advocate for more options for healthy eating. Because unfortunately, we have a lot of neighborhoods that I think the term is food deserts, where there aren't readily available fresh fruits and vegetables for people to take advantage of. So we need to continue to work on that, making sure that everyone has access to that. You know, again, it's, it's about us taking control of our own health. But I think as a community, to make the whole community healthy, we need to look at some community efforts that can be taken advantage of. And that's where the environment really plays an important role. In closing, can you paint a vision for what you want to see happen mm -hmm. that's different than the story that is coming? What's a different story that you want to see for your son and the sons of people out there yeah. listening? Yeah. My vision, obviously, would be that we find a way to make medical services affordable, convenient, and 
encourage or empower people to take charge of their lives as it relates to their health. We have the Internet. We have resources that were not available to us just 10 years ago that people can use if they're going to text and they're going to be on Facebook and they're going to be on this and they're going to get on the health, okay? Get on the health site. Ask the question. My daughter-in-law asked me the other day, she said, I've been getting a headache. It starts here and da-da-da. I went into Google and I didn't ask for anything specific. I said pain on right side of neck and all kinds of information Mm -hmm. popped up. My vision is that people use the resources that are available to them, and we're getting more and more of them. And if you don't have a computer, that is no excuse. Go to the library. Free. So my vision is people are taking charge of their lives. Okay. Well, Brenda, thank you for the continued work for decades that you've done in our community. You love the unlovable and you make hope possible for us. So we really appreciate you as a person and you and your contribution here. And thank thank you you for listening, listeners. See you again next week. Alive and Well STL. Thank you for joining us today. For resources available, go to AliveAndWellSTL.com. If you have more questions about the program, need help, or want to connect, please call the message box at 314-333-8369. The Regional Health Commission with Chief Executive Officer Robert Friend Jr. committed to providing a detailed review of change over the past decade in 14 leading health indicators for the city and county of St. Louis. The first decade review of health status report and update to building a healthier St. Louis. Discover the narrative, the data, and celebrate the progress already made to improve health care access and reduce health disparities in our region. Learn more at stlrhc.org. Alive and Well STL is another positive production of Rare Gym Productions. Thanks for listening. <laughs>